don't want to get your grill, by the way. Did you get your own book? Yes, I did, but it's trash. I have a bad feeling. I didn't even open it up. I didn't know what it was. Come to order, please. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to continue with the uh, Rochester City Council meeting for February the 23rd. Those of you just tuning in on RTC, uh, we just concluded the downtown revitalization plan presentation and public meeting. Now we'll continue with the uh, regular council meeting. Uh, okay, we're ready for uh, the minutes. Uh, you all received copies of uh, the last city council meetings uh, and the executive uh, meeting of January the 26th, 2016. Special session February 1st, 2016. Um, anybody have any issues with the minutes? If not, I would entertain a motion. So moved. Second to approve the minutes. Second. Those in favor? I don't vote. I'm just coaching you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just coaching you. You know, you know how it was. It goes clear back to school. Right? Everybody yeah, you get your hand up. Yeah, that's right. Um, the Board of Public Works and Safety uh, the meeting uh, was also January 7th to the 21st, 20, 7th and the 21st, 2016. Information only. Anybody have any questions or concerns about those? Okay. All right. That takes us down to uh, reports of our officers. Can you go back to communications real quick? Sure. I'm sorry. I forgot to put on there. A uh, couple things I just want to give you guys a heads up. Uh, City Hall and water office hours are going to be changing as of April 1st. We're going to be open from 7.30 a.m. until 4 p.m. instead of 4.30 p.m. And I had a thought, just give it right now because mm -hmm. I'll lose it. We need to change it on our door. Yes. That, I've got to get a hold of uh, okay. Mr. Lewis about that. Okay. okay. Uh, and then also, I'm not sure if you guys read the shopping guide or not and seen the article in there, but I uh, will be losing Amy Stewart in the water office. So I have had an ad in the paper, and I'm going to be starting interviews tomorrow to replace her position. Um, hopefully, we'll have I'll get someone hired in, in there in the next couple of weeks and get them starting going on training so they get a couple of months of training under their belt before I lose Amy. And you'll see a new fresh face in there. So those are the only two things I had, just to keep you apprised of what's going on. We really hate to see Amy leave, by the way. Amy's been a very, very good uh, participant there in the front office and uh, with the water department. Wish her well. Okay, uh, moving on then, uh, how about a report from uh, Fire Chief Butler? Just for the record, I have my own budget for fire trucks. <laughs> okay, uh, a copy of uh, January report in front of you. Uh, structure fires, one in the city, one in Rochester Township. Snow fires, two in the city. Calls for smoke, one in the city. Auto fire alarms, two in the city, one in Rochester Township. Mutual aids, two Abenabi Township, one Macy, one Mentone. Had a bomb scare in the city, had accidents, six in Rochester Township one in Richland Township, gas leaks, one in Rochester Township, CO checks, two in the city, two in Rochester Township, medical assist, 20 in the city, seven in Rochester Township, one in Newcastle Township, and we drove the ambulance six times back to the hospital. Service calls, one in the city, coroner assist, one in the city, canceled calls, three in the city, one in Rochester Township, one in Henry Township, a total of 60 runs and one drill. Pending your question, that concludes my report for the month of January. Uh, question, Chief. With the drove the ambulance six times, how, what does that mean? Uh, it's, normally there's a, a, a medical emergency in back where the paramedic and the, um, the EMT needs to be with the patient, so uh, a fireman, either one of the full-time or one of the volunteers, whoever shows up at scene, <coughs> end up driving the ambulance from the scene to the hospital 
uh, occasionally will drive right to the flight line if they're going to fly right out on uh, Samaritan's aircraft. So we, we physically drive the ambulance back and the technicians. And sometimes we, depending on how bad the call is or what the call is, uh, we, we've actually provided uh, an EMT or first responder in the back as well. How does that work with the new arrangement with Lutheran? Uh, we're, we're covered under the insurance. It, it, it's still a 911 call. It's still, we're still serving the people in Rochester. We're still, um, without it, there's no way if, if someone's in full cardiac arrest, that crew of two aren't, aren't going to be able to facilitate a adequate care. So it's, it's still a 911 call. We're still on scene. We're still providing the best service we can for the citizens of Rochester. Thank you. Anything else for Chief Butler? Has anything changed since uh, Lutheran has taken over EMS? Um, not really. I, I, I've heard some grumblings among the employees, uh, hiccups, um, some policy changes, some mandatory uh, education at the new uh, you can look at it as it's harder for them better for us um, really it's it's still the same crew uh, you wouldn't know anything has changed except now they all have Lutheran uniforms the uh, letterhead now says Lutheran on it the first ambulance is out getting wrapped right now so that'll come back into Rochester that'll be housed here at first uh, it'll be their their purple kind of uh, Lutheran scheme that you saw when they came to town from uh, Kosciuszko. There's still, Kosciuszko is still the governing, uh, it's, it's Lutheran Kosciuszko LLC. Um, Lutheran Fulton is just a fictitious name per se, but all, all the, the the upper echelon and, and payroll and billing and everything, supply chains come from, from Kosciuszko County. Uh, we are our own entity though here with, with Jen still the director. Just a thought, Tom, while you were talking. Well, we need to change the signage. They, they, they are going to take care of that. Uh, they approached me. It's their sign. They paid for it. They're going to pay for it to be changed. All they're going to do is they're going to take off. It'll look like their ambulance the way the sign does now. So it'll be a, a purplish yellow or bluish yellow uh, kind of sign. Uh, they're, they're paying for it. It's their sign. Same sign, just re. re yeah, I, I told them they're not going to change the, the dimensions, the, the dynamics, the appearance. They're not going to have a light and scrolling, whatever. It'll be the same as ours, and it'll still have the same uh, aesthetic effect up front. Great. Anything else? Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Chief Shots? Did you notice they didn't say the police chief when they were talking about the equipment? I'm glad. <laughs> it's a nice brief. It's only because he's got a taser and I don't. I have to request it for that for the next meeting. Sorry, Chief. Dr. Gavin. Thank you. Okay, for the month of January, now we had a total of 12 accidents. Uh, we issued 57 warnings. Uh, a total of 51 offenses with 18 being criminal and 30, I'm sorry, 18 traffic, 30 criminal and 3 juvenile. Total case reports for the month were 48. We had 573 calls for service, 46 lockouts, 7 towed vehicles and 12 people incarcerated. And then you have the, the crimes that individuals were lodged for for the month of January. Do you have any questions about those numbers? Or those reports. And then other news uh, right now with the application process. Um, we have, a, I think, 15 total applications turned back in. Uh, we're, we've got testing set for March 26th. Everyone that turns in an application gets an invitation to testing. Typically, we'll have two to four people not show up that turn an application back in, and typically, by the numbers, about 50% or so will pass the test. So we're not starting off on a great foot, but I'm hopeful. Um, Tyler Dennison leaves for the academy next month. His first day is March 14th, and I believe graduation is mid-July, so he'll be down at the academy for the next few few months. And then the ladies handgun class, I believe the tentative date is May 15th. Uh, we're not started advertising yet, but we're taking names but we will probably at the first of april it only takes about three or four days before that fills up um, 
depending on the turnout, we may add. The la last year we had one class in the spring, one class in the fall. Uh, depending on manpower issues and, and availability, we might try to add a summer class in there. And that's about all I have unless you have any questions. Not a question, but a comment. A couple of weeks ago, your couple of canine officers came and presented to the Kiwanis Club, and I just want to tell you, they did a really good job. I appreciate that. Interesting to watch those dogs work. Yeah, it always is. Yeah, we're pretty proud of them. They do a good job on those yeah. presentations. Uh, they also do a lot with the schools also. So they did yeah. a great job. It is, it is very good. Thanks. That's it. Anything else for the Chief? Thanks. Thanks, Andy. Okay, uh, Derek, Derek Holloway, Water Department. <coughs> um, the meeting we had on February 1st, 2016, um, I presented a quote for uh, backup generators for the water tower sites. Um, we, we had that ice storm a couple months back and we lost power to the Lake Tower and the 4th Street Tower. Um, I felt that it was a necessity that we should look into it and have the backup generators in case something goes down due to the SCADA system that we have now that we spent all the money on when we did the construction project. Um, we had quotes come in and the board approved Everpar out of uh, Fort Wayne to, uh, for three 16 kilowatt generators for the tower sites that came in at $12,312. Um, that included automatic transfer switches and that also included uh, fabricated pads for them to sit on. Um, we had a quote come in from Cummins Cross Point. Um, they actually quoted for 25 kilowatt generators um, for three of them, and that came in at $36,748. They chose not to go with them. Um, I also presented a quote to the water board um, from a company called Corpro out of Ohio. Um, to look at uh, replacing our aviation lights on the 4th Street Tower and the Lake Tower. Um, they quoted back for $3,200 for both of them, um, and they're going to convert them over to LEDs. The board approved that and the generators as well. Um, I also presented a quote from the same company, Corpro, to uh, get on a maintenance agreement where they uh, maintain the interior lights at the Lake Tower and also the 18th Street Tower, um, and the board approved that as well. Derek, if I could interrupt, mm -hmm. could you uh, explain to the council the importance of those generators, what uh, the downside of not having those generators in place would be? Uh, we can't monitor the tower, which means in that situation, the biggest fear that I had was if there was a major fire out there, um, there wasn't a way for us to monitor that tower and, we, and hope that they wouldn't drain us. Um, so that's my... The if we would lose power for some reason. If we lose power or communication from the telephone company as well. Um, I also presented an update to the board. Go ahead. No, oh, I'm sorry. Those generators, though, wouldn't help you if you lost Not communication, the, correct? No. My hope is that our TC looks out for us and helps us out like we would them. I'm sure they would. Yes. Um, I gave an update on well number two. We started the maintenance on that. Um, when that is complete, basically well two will be considered a new well. Um, they've already done well one and that's all done. So um, well two is in the process of being done now. Um, I also presented an update to the board that uh, they started replacing all the ceiling in the old plant. Um, and Mr. Walsh, who has left the meeting, um, he is replacing all the inside lights throughout the whole plant itself. Um, those are all being done at this time, uh, and it looks really good. Um, other than that, that's all I have. Do you have any questions? I'll take it. Derek? Well Thanks, done. Derek. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Warren is very ill, so uh, he is passed <coughs> on tonight. Um, everything's going along smoothly with the street department. Uh, 
we continue uh, preparing for winter. The uh, mayor's snow removal plan is working beautifully. <laughs> you won't be able to say that. Twenty-four hours. We'll uh, we'll go back and revisit that. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone is uh, prepared. Tape is working. Yes. Yes. Everyone's prepared for being dumped on. So uh, that's that's what's going on there. Okay. Do let's. Do they happen uh, to have a list yet for um, sidewalks and streets yet as to where? They're going to pave? Where we're going to pave? No, we don't have that put together yet. No, I was just curious. Um, committee reports. Uh, Mark McCall's not here, but uh, we've got Casey. Casey, is there anything you'd like to say about the Area Planning Commission? Um, actually, I can give you a quick update. We um, are actually going to be starting amendments. We've been working on amendments from, we started in 2012. There's always tweaks. The zoning ordinance is always an evolving document, and um, so we're we started them in 2012, and then we kind of put them. I put them on a static hold because Rochester was working on their revitalization plan. Kiwana at the time was working on a revitalization plan. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Rochester was working on a safe routes to school plan. We were working on the ADA transition plans for both the city and for the county. And we are at the point um, now, Rochester's plan was the last one I was kind of waiting for. I really wanted it to go through the council and make sure it had the blessing uh, before we added it as an addendum to the comprehensive plan. A lot of times when grants um, you know, are being applied for, they want to know if a city or a town or the county has a comprehensive plan. And I think it would be a good asset to have included as an addendum to that all of the different revitalization plans so that's just kind of the brief and narrow the planning commission okay. starting that process again and once they um for those of you who are new how that works with the different legislative bodies is um, any ordinance that is effective inside your city that you are the legislative body over has to be approved by you so what we do is we go through the amendment process the planning commission recommends it to each of the legislative bodies and then I'll bring those amendments to you, try to break them down to where it's a little bit easier to understand as far as which ones apply to you and which ones maybe apply out in the unincorporated area. Um, but then you have to approve those if you have changes, if you have questions, we kind of go through it all that time. And um, I'll do that with each of the legislative bodies. So. Okay. Anything for Casey? Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Casey. Okay, FEDCO, <coughs> Brian. FEDCO met February 4th, um, reported a $9,431.88 in their checking account, operating reserve balance at $107,467.64. Um, th as far as local business, everyone was pretty much the same. 2016 is off to a slow start, save Rapid View. Um, they're in line to have their best for first quarter ever. Um, they're gearing up for a big trade show in Indianapolis at the end of this month. Schnabel Tier is in the process of adding on a bathroom and a bigger retail area. So they're doing, they're doing pretty well. Uh, Kroger <coughs> also had uh, better sales for 2016 so far um, compared to 2015. They have lost three employees since January, but they're not replacing them at this time. Um, Sales amounts from last year has enabled them to hire a third co-manager, so they'll have a more management presence on the floor. Um, the attraction committee met <clears throat> and discussed uh, properties such as Ninth and Main, our industrial ground on Blackader, um, a building in the building in Kiwana. Uh, most of the conversa conversation was on Ninth and Main, um, coming up with ideas for that space, and also talk of the downtown movie theater um, the feeling is not really up to date for an actual movie theater so we're look they're looking at uh, making it more of a community theater with live shows um, and the option to possibly drop down a screen for movie festival type events um, the industrial network event that um, FEDCO put on a few months ago they were doing another another one February 25th 515 at the airport um, they, they have invitations out now 
uh, Dean Foods building. Terry sent a lead to Dean's last, the week prior to the meeting. Um, and there's a company looking for a USDA organic certified facility. The building's not currently for sale, but Dean's is willing to talk to anyone interested. And Team Pride is planning an open house when their building is ready. Um, they're aiming for the end of February. Ninth and Main, Fedco has purchased the Ninth and Main lot. Uh, Terry's currently waiting bids to fill it in. Um, and that's pretty much what I have. Okay. Any questions? Park Board, Mason. All right. Uh, we gave Dave Clark permission to use Little League Field again this year. Um, Lenny from the street department is working on fixing the basketball goal and repainting the, uh, the goal at JC Park. Um, most of our meeting was spent on two issues. One, the beach across from, or by the boat launch at the lake and the bathroom in the park. Um, on the beach, the DNR get, had, uh, gave us a permit that is only good for this year. Um, which we can remove boulders that have fallen into the lake. Um, so we need to get those out, add pea gravel, and there's talk of adding mason sand instead of the current sand that's there that is a, you know, more dense, clumpier sand. The mason sand will be a, more what you're used to at a beach style. Um, the bathroom at the park, we're <coughs> talking about building new one. There was another meeting for that that I was not able to attend. Do you have anything to add on that? Or kind of where we're at. I'm not sure. If yeah, actually, we have the park board president with us uh, tonight. But uh, that uh, the uh, bathroom venture, uh, we're looking at a precast concrete style bathroom that is a it's a pre-built uh, unit. weighs about 6,500 pounds. It's brought in. It's dropped off. Uh, of a flatbed truck with a with a crane and it's hooked up right on the spot uh, used throughout the state uh, Terre Haute I believe has 10 of them Aurora Indiana has five or six of them they're uh, they're not only a very nice bathroom setup but as you can imagine they make a nice tornado shelter something comes on the park very quickly there is a place to go where uh, it uh, would be uh, advantageous to be through a high wind situation. So uh, there's still some investigation going on relative to the uh, site preparation. Uh, the, the board wanted to see some some costs on site preparation before they actually uh, vote on on that uh, that style of unit. And did I say that right, Kim? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, and it will be handicapped accessible and we do not have one of those Sure. The ADA approved. ADA, yes. Yeah. So yes. I feel that's really important to have. Yes. And I'm looking forward to it. Would you state your name for the record, please? For Kimberly Landon. Did you get that? Okay. All right. Kim, was there a cost for the uh, the one that's on the north side? How much it cost to put up? How much it was how much the uh, the other one, the other concrete building, bathroom? How much it cost to put up? Uh, 15 years ago, it was approximately $65,000. Okay. And I got a hold of the gentleman from Sites, and he told me to add 30 to 40 percent to that. So it came, so to help me on the numbers, 80 to 90. Yeah, yeah, right around that. They increased the cost <clears throat> quite significantly. Wow. The bathroom that we're looking at now is $67,000. We would have the cost of hooking it up which is um, just one main pipe with the water and the sewage, everything else is hooked up. Well, that's the other yep. benefit of the precast unit. There's thousands of them made every day, so keeps the cost reasonable. Okay, that any other questions? Okay. Uh, There's a question. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, sure. My name is Judy Klein here. Just a question about the park since you're talking about it. last late last summer early fall I read in the paper they were going to be uh, drawing pickleball lines on the tennis courts at Vansler my grandson checked that was 
wasn't done the last, has it been done? Will it be done? Um, I talked to the gentleman that was gonna do that and he said that um, they tried putting tape down and it didn't work, it wouldn't stick, so they're gonna go back and power wash and try that. I just wanted to go ahead and paint it, but that would be fine. So, so they were just, yes. Yeah, so you haven't forgotten it. Have My grandson will that. be happy, thank you. Yes, it's important. <laughs> I'm sorry, what are pickleboard lines? Pickle, it's played on a tennis court, smaller cord, and you use a different ball and a different oh. paddle. It's like a wooden, not a net, solid. Oh. Kind of like it's, a large ping pong table. Yeah. Oh, okay. Especially nice for seniors, because it's a slower pace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, you. anything else for park board? Okay, uh, Terry's, we've had the Redevelopment Commission uh, presentation. Uh, Rochester BZA and Council on Aging, Marty. BZA meeting would have been tomorrow, but it has been canceled. The uh, Council on Aging meeting was yesterday, and uh, no action items were on the agenda, but some updates, uh, some things that I've mentioned here before, but apparently uh, uh, we've got news that Transpo is going to get two new vehicles uh, sometime this summer, which is good news. Uh, we don't know about whether the, uh, we're going to have to come up with some matching funds or not, but uh, at any rate, there have been two slotted for Fulton County. I mentioned last time the uh, key process has been looked at it at the building and and there are a lot of uh, organizations that do use that building for meetings and the process for getting a key has now been changed and you do have to go the day before your event sign in get a key and then take it back the day after your event and that's in place now as a procedure they have hired uh, one new driver all the batteries have been replaced and the fire alarms, but we are still waiting uh, to get word on the hard wiring that was being looked at. Um, bathroom doors that were installed that are new, unfortunately, are a little bit too heavy for <laughs> some of the folks with walkers that are trying to get into the bathroom. So uh, they've taken the closure off of those to try to make that a little bit easier. It seems to be working. Uh, the awning in the uh, over the counter in the kitchen in the <coughs> serving area is up. It looks really nice <coughs> to buy and see it. Uh, there are RSVPs looking for some more volunteers. The carnation sale is underway and. Those are, I think, a dollar fifty a piece, and price goes down if you order more than twenty-five. Uh, Woodlawn re-upped the their advertising on the vehicles and have has written the check for ninety-six hundred dollars for that to the Council on Aging. And believe it or not, uh, they are on pace. To probably do something approaching 50,000 trips this in 2016. Wow. They're more than 500 trips ahead of January of <coughs> January and, and February of, of this year. Uh, we are in the process of looking for two new board members. And uh, other than, oh, the golf tournament has been set. Those of you that are interested in that, the date for the annual fundraising golf tournament is May 14th and that's at the Elks Club. That's it unless there are questions. Any questions for Marty? Is there any more on the roof? Was it supposed to <coughs> something wrong with the roof or something? Yes, there are estimates that are being done. Okay, Solid Waste and Animal Adoption Center. Chase? Um, I was able to make both meetings for additional reasons. Okay. Um, I was at the Solid Waste Board meeting, and uh, 
the, uh, the correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the major topics was, of course, uh, expenses uh, for the solid waste waste board and uh, the uh, the issue of uh, seventeen hundred dollars that's paid to the city for the curb pickup that's uh, becoming very difficult for them to scrape up they're running running in the red just about every every month uh, <clears throat> said I would mention that to the council for the council to think about uh, I also offered to uh, uh, see if we could open it back up to see if anybody would be interested in contracting for the recycling. We haven't looked at that for a while. Also, the uh, the issue of uh, the tipping fees that uh, we've been getting, that's always been on a, uh, an honor system. And uh, Stacy and I are going to go out and visit the <coughs> landfill and speak with the, the officials, uh, not only the plant manager here, but uh, but his boss, and discuss that whole situation. The agreement was written so that that, that could not be reopened. The tipping fee arrangement uh, was based on an agreement made years ago, and yet uh, when, when the out-of-state trash ceased, those, those fees disappeared, which we, we did not foresee in the original agreement. We're going to go back out and discuss that with them. Not only that, but also how they are uh, figuring uh, our monies that are uh, uh, paid to us uh, as a result of uh, the tipping, tipping fees, how the fees are actually figured. We're going to go out for a little education. And that was uh, pretty much the extent of the meeting. <coughs> Yeah. Any questions? Okay. Tree board and EMS, Brian. Yeah. Tree board met on February fourth. Uh, Warren Lee's went through the tree list of uh, ones that been reported to to be looked at, and they're based on how they're going to be done. Uh, we looked at the uh, the current situation and possibly looking at the, uh, developing work order, so they would know which tree to, to be able to track. You know, if somebody, if a homeowner called in about a particular tree, they would know and make sure they cut down the right one, rather than one that wasn't damaged or was causing a problem. So they're looking into that, uh, uh, as well as looking at uh, <coughs> pruning and uplifting on the streets. Uh, make sure that the uh, school buses can get through without hitting everything. Fire trucks can get down. That way, Chief won't have to get new fire trucks with that money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to take hits forever. <laughs> 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 yeah, but the main thing was looking at the possibility of you know, looking at new, uh, new work order in terms of being able to track everything. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I, I think part of that uh, request was uh, Shada needs more visibility from our uh, our tree trimmer as to what he's actually doing. Uh, a more detailed uh, explanation when the billing's made, so when we've got a work order, we can apply that. To it. And it puts accountability back on us. And the thought process too is is the application comes in, and then we have our folks sign off to say. Yes, this was the tree. This was what we took care of, and plus the the other side of that too is the tree board needs to know what species of trees for our tree city application process in our plan, so that there's a kind of a mixed bag in there of that process to help with facilitate all of that. <coughs> then moving on to the EMS advisory board met on February 12th. Uh, the big it basically everything. The focus are on working out the bugs from switching over to Lutheran. When there, there were any problems with the service itself or anything like that, um, as previously mentioned, the logos would be uh, called wrapping the ambulances, uh, they're updating or modifying the radios that they have, uh, they're, uh, training all the personnel on new protocols, and uh, by the 
response from I think Chief Butler and others was that the the training is going well and then the protocol that what they're doing is not they're not just you know, reinventing the wheel but you know getting them the training that they need. Uh, biggest issue through the uh, the meeting was the problem that the dispatch is having because of the the mutual aid agreements between the various volunteer fire departments and who they go to and who they don't go to. But again, they're just working out the bugs as they're going forward. It wasn't, they weren't going to say, no, we're not going to work with you or, or anyone else anymore. And so, other than any questions, those are my reports. Okay. Uh, and as far as the uh, water board meeting, uh, Derek hit all the high points that happened in our water board meeting. Okay, we don't have any old business, anything under old business. Takes us down to new business. DWDM LLC tax abatement renewal. Boys. <laughs> Boy, you guys must be comfortable. You don't have the lawyer with you this time. <laughs> oh, he's in the wing. <laughs> oh, he's in the wing. Oh, for God. Okay. Uh, Don Towns is from Cairo and Wayne Group represent DWDM on the tax bait and our building out to the south end of town, uh, being utilized as town home furnishings and uh, Sears. Uh, I think this is our seventh year. We have this conversation every year. Every year. I believe I believe you're right because I, I know last year we had the conversation and you were I think you were six years last year. Yeah, so I think this is that's seven it's year. Nothing. It's a, it's the same every year. Nothing really changes. Resolution number fourteen two thousand and five, and then 08 completion date. So yes. Seven. And is it a ten year? Yes. Was it a ten year? Um, was there anything else that you want no, to say? It, yeah, it's pretty much the same each year. You know, yeah. nothing changes. And, and I'd make a motion to approve <coughs> to renew the abatement for another year. We have a second. A second. Those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Looks like five zip. Still passed. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. You're Thank you. Okay. You guys don't have to run off. We're <laughs> <laughs> walking real slow. <laughs> okay. Okay, Councilman Thompson. Uh, you're under new business. RDP support. You have the floor. Yes, I just wanted to bring up a little bit about um, what's going on with RDP, uh, Rochester Downtown Partnership, and you know what's going on with um, uh, what they explained earlier. And um, I kind of wanted to get into see if the council would be interested in um, kind of supporting RDP with monetarily, um, and kind of what you guys thought about that. Um, giving it like a line item in our budget every year or just you know look at it every year and see if we can do that but I just thought I'd like to bring that up see what you guys thought about it hey, correct me if I'm wrong and Marty and Brian uh, maybe you can speak to this but haven't haven't there, hasn't there been two hundred thousand dollars committed to the uh, development uh, process for parking lot or something. Oh, out oh, of oh, oh, yeah. oh, the paving budget. Yeah. Paving. I'm not out sure of the street department. But that's yeah. not, that's not. Yeah, I think that's separate. Yeah, it is completely. Yeah, that was to pave the parking lot. On, yeah, uh, on. 7th and Main, Madison. Yeah. Right. Oh, the, behind our, yeah. And, and yeah. our block behind our building and across the street. By the old fire. <coughs> yeah, we were asked to budget. carve that out of the paving budget for okay. this year. And how the Rochester Downtown Partnership this year. is putting plans to help from the design committee for that, but I don't believe the money is coming to the Rochester Downtown Partnership. They 
our creative design. Yeah. It's kind of up in the air because there's a few things floating around about yeah. that too. Yeah. It's not totally mm -hmm. yeah. designed and and it kind of, I think too with the downtown revitalization plan too, and some of the ideas that they come out with may rethink if you guys want to how you want to look at those parking lots too, and how you want to do that. Well, and we had a meeting <coughs> with uh, Ted came to the meeting it just with a couple other folks with Terry and then a few with Harry just to look at potentially creating an action item list for everybody to get on the same page because there are so many plans that that are out there you saw <laughs> what that looks like and so figuring out what those high impact plans are and actually figuring out what's the best plan for 2016 dependent upon the funds and whatever is available with the city council and all the other funding opportunities and then hit those highlights for 2016 2017 so it wouldn't it would probably be different depending upon what the group decides are those available high impact um, projects so. it, it, it bears mentioning it's probably a little premature in looking at specifics as to what yeah. we would put as far line as the line item we can't do yeah. that until next budget because yeah. this budget is set yeah um uh, something i'll throw out too to, to kick around as you to think about is one of the things the promotions committee is talking about doing with rdp is coming up with some kind of a um i don't want to say sponsorship but some kind of a program to where you could <coughs> donate so much money to certain projects that we're doing if you so choose so that's something too that the city could look at doing something like that and then it would be a sponsorship in the city's name yeah. so that could be an opportunity that wouldn't be a budgetary um that we wouldn't you know as far as the line item but we would be able to so that so to right. do something like i mean that. i definitely think this is something the city needs to get behind and support um mm -hmm. this um, we've been trying to go after the stellar grant for many years and this is the kind of thing that will put you over the top I believe mm -hmm. um, and we have the you know for us at least the way what my whiteboard says is <laughs> if that's on, it's not going to let everything goes away supposed to we're moving um, for solidarity for them to be an organization because currently they are using the 501c6 designation they cannot receive the grants from uh, okra, okra because of that currently but I just had Sarah I just did my final uh, cuts on the uh, bylaws gave them to Sarah tonight to get those done we work with Brian to get the articles of incorporation so we can work with uh, someone else to get the five, um, the nonprofit status so that said our my goal is to have them on their own as an organization that can receive the funds and grants by the end of this year so that January 2017 when we have to do the annual report it's done by this team that will be be moving forward with a full budget bylaws plans organization and able to actually execute on their own versus being under the the chamber's umbrella so that they can receive money from the city and okra whoever else desires to, to fund the projects that's the tentative plan as long as everybody everything works out so yeah it it, it it bears bringing them up but it's a little early yeah so do you have to have that status to become a line item to be able to receive money from the oh, I don't know about this. For I mean, what, the city, that's what Chase is asking, though, for the line item. Designated, I mean, for a, designated line item, yes. Right. So then, do the they have line. to have that? From, from the city's perspective, I do not know. From Okra, from the <clears throat> Okra State Organization, yes, they need it. Yes, then. we okay. have to have that 501C designation. They cannot be under the chamber's designation right. and receive funding <coughs> from Okra. So. Grant funding. Grant funding. Right, but that has nothing to do with the city budget saying no. they're going to get this much every year for that line item. Yes. No. No. The, yeah. We don't need the 501c3 for that. Okay. I mean, do you think it would make more sense to? To do that, or to um, you know, when the when projects come along, having match dollars, I guess, um, coming to the city for matching grants, uh, would that make more sense to do instead of like a continuous? I think for stream? budgetary for budgetary reasons with the city, I think it probably would make more sense because uh, you know from what we've seen and, and what I've experienced just in the last six months a lot of these projects are dependent upon I mean I watch Terry every day I mean it calls that come back 
funding that comes or falls through. So I think to be able to look at it, if that is available, kind of a project by project basis, that would probably be more applicable. And we're, I, I feel like we're probably, like Ted said, a little premature to kind of move forward. I think it's great to bring it up. I think it's necessary to have that funding and support. But right now, my main goal is I, to I would just suggest, you know, just yeah. suggesting <laughs> that, uh, that the group uh, reaches its point of stabilization, mm -hmm. gets its bylaws and everything established, and becomes the 501c3. And then, then they're the group. They're mm -hmm. the group. Right now, we're a little disoriented with, with it. So. Yeah, Everybody's, everybody, you know, FedCo's coming alongside the Redevelopment Commission, coming, side, coming alongside the Chamber and the um, RDP. And so we're. It's on getting the there. It, it's, it's getting, getting there. there. It's encouraging. All the meetings are encouraging. It's that moving on the on ramp of organization and, and decision. So, but yeah, I think it probably, if you can do whatever's the easiest way, but if it's a project by project, that might be. And we'll set the budget up from the RDP yeah. standpoint, whatever yeah. way. We yeah. will do whatever's easiest. And we appreciate, I appreciate what Brian said too that it's time that we, that the that this council gets behind as well because like you said stellar is a big and that's one of the biggest things is having that commitment <coughs> from the city. Absolutely. Do you, Amy, do you have, and you may not be the right person, I don't know, but is, is there any kind of a flowchart that's been designated it's complicated enough for us that are in a lot of meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the public that's not in any of the meetings, uh, seller grants, RDP, mm -hmm. these people tonight, it's a very complex organization for the, is that's there a, any kind of a flow chart you've created that? As far as how everybody works towards the projects? Yeah, the where process. they fit in that process. process. It's something that we've actually, Ted brought it up um, at the meeting, what day was that, a couple days ago? Something that we looked at because even for Ted, he was gracious enough to come. Um, we had Terry there, so he's, <clears throat> the two organizations, the chamber was there, Rochester Downtown Partnership and Design Committee. So it would be something that would probably help us. Uh, we have just, from my, please, you know, say if I'm incorrect, but I feel like we've just got to the place where we're all actually moving in the same direction. Mm -hmm. um, it took a while to get everybody on the same page as to what their borders were, who did what. So good because I've been in some meetings. I'm not sure who I, who yeah. I was meeting for. Yeah, and yeah. it took yeah, yeah. and the, and the thing that I think is the most confusing or the most helpful is <laughs> the reason that there are these organizations is because they offer the opportunity to receive funding. Okay. So that's why for my three organizations, I felt it was necessary to come alongside Terry and the organizations there because we offer three separate opportunities for funding, but we should all have one plan. Yeah, Mark. Okay. And the arm Marty's of whatever project, so let's say for one project, the Rochester Downtown Partnership can receive an MSRP grant which then would go in that something that Fedco couldn't receive that grant for, but the, the partnership could. So that's why, but it is confusing. So we can look at potentially what does that look and like. And it would be nice if it was something that we could at least on a simplified form yes. get in our hands so that if somebody asks us the question, we can, well, here, it make, make a little more sense to you if you see how it all fits together. And Terry and I decided this week um, we're going to start meeting even because we meet sporadically. But <clears throat> I think after my the board meeting for the chamber, he and I are going to start meeting once a month to make sure even he and I are on the same page to to do this. So I think within the next few months we should be able to do something Great. That, that would, would be helpful. That would so be that very not helpful. Because we're all working parallel. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now we're working parallel, which is a good thing. <laughs> right, I know. We're, Kind of in we the were, right direction. Everybody was kind of doing their little thing, but now it's the, the different pieces, which is exciting because well, they do provide doing. funding. Most of what happens is the funding needs. Mm -hmm. And so using the specific organization, because now they know what their boundaries and borders are and what they can apply. And we have an amazing Okra uh, new community liaison who just started uh, this year. And she's been in my office and Terry's office at least once or twice a month 
and, and helping us to even more fully understand right. yeah. what's going on. So we're kind of at the beginning stages, I feel like still, but we are moving in a direction we should be able to. I look at it from a long range perspective of by the end of 2017, really knowing which direction, and even I hope before that, but that's what our plan is to get us moving forward. But, but you're absolutely right, Marty. We talked a couple days ago that in business you would call it a Gantt chart. Mm -hmm. And That's it's what I by just wrote time. Down. Gantt chart. <laughs> and it's by timing and, and every piece of it and everybody who's involved shows up on the chart mm -hmm. right. and when they come into play. Right. Yep. And, yeah. and we're almost there. Mm -hmm. we, we're very close to a place where we can do something like that because now everybody's having those combined conversations. That's a, that's a project management tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yes, sir, we can look at that. Anything else, uh, gentlemen? Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, we've, uh, we've got an ordinance uh, for tonight. Uh, Shada, would you like to do a little preamble to this ordinance as a result of our audit? Sure. <laughs> uh, we actually had... Um, received word that we had a and I may actually ask Andy I'm not sure how much I can speak to the meeting that we had is it confidential no, you don't you don't have to to say that uh, uh, we were uh, there were changes to the FMLA after the original approval of the personnel policies handbook and the ordinance incorporates some of those changes kind of to reflect amendments that were made to the FMLA. Yeah, and I mean, we had a Department of Labor <coughs> audit on it, and there was suggestions made as to how we could bring our handbook up to uh, current, current laws. Mm -hmm. So that's what this ordinance is, is that in a nutshell, it's just there was two sections in our FMLA section that did not meet current uh, federal law so and that of course is Family Medical Leave Act okay. um, I'm sorry so is, was it just outdated then the, it, well it just our, our employee handbook was written in 2012 and these changes came out in 2013 okay. <laughs> so, so, so yes um, it was yeah. outdated, it was outdated. <laughs> And we, and unfortunately for us, the federal mm -hmm. government doesn't just send out notice to say, "Hey, by the way, we made these changes." And, oh, really? Yeah. So. <laughs> and yeah, they were pretty <laughs> minuscule, but they were changes. So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which uh, has also in turn changed some of our processes internally as well. Yes. Procedures. Procedures. So could I have a first reading of ordinance number 02-2016, uh, President Goodman? We need a motion. A motion for a I'll, reading? I'll move the uh, first reading for ordinance number 02-2016 in its entirety. Second. Any second? Second. Those in favor? Unanimous. <coughs> okay. President Goodman. Ordinance number 02-2016, an ordinance to amend the employee handbook. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Rochester has determined that portion of the City employees employee handbook involving the Federal Family Medical Leave Act should be modified to adhere to current law. Now therefore be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Rochester that section 4.7.1, entitlement defining eligibility <laughs> of unpaid FMLA leave for up to 12 weeks is hereby modified to add certain language as indicated by bold text. Eligible employees are entitled to 12 weeks of unpaid FMLA leave for the following situations. One, for birth of a son or daughter and to care for the newborn child. Two, for placement with the employee of a son or daughter for adoption or foster care. Three, to care for the employee's spouse, son, daughter, or parent with a serious health condition. Four, the employee's own serious health condition that makes the employee unable to perform the functions of one's position. Five, because of any qualifying exigency arising out of the fact that the employee's spouse, son, daughter, or parent is a military member on covered active duty or has been notified of an impending call or order to covered active duty status. And six, to care for a covered service member with a serious injury or illness 
if the employee is the spouse, son, daughter, parent, or next of kin of the covered service member. Section 4.7.3, requesting FMLA leave, defining the steps to request FMLA leave is hereby modified to add certain language as indicated in bold and remove certain language as indicated by strike through. All requests for FMLA leave must be submitted to the department head for determination. When an employee requests FMLA leave or when the employer acquires knowledge that an employee's leave may be for an FMLA qualifying reason, the employer <coughs> must notify the employee of the employee's eligibility to take FMLA leave within five business days absent extenuating circumstances. Such requests shall be supported by medical certification on FMLA forms provided by the city. Do I have a motion for the second reading? Make a motion for the second reading by title only. Okay. So <coughs> second. second. Or second. Was Marty, second? Marty, second. Marty second. Those in favor? Okay. Ordinance number 02-2016, an ordinance to amend the employee handbook. Motion to uh, adopt ordinance number, yeah. or third one, reading. I need a third reading, don't I? Ordinance for, or motion for a third reading <laughs> by title only. So moved. Second. 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 Chase. Chase gets it. Yes. Go ahead. Those in favor? Okay. Ordinance number 2-2016, an ordinance to amend the employee handbook. Now you can vote. Now we can vote. Jeez. Well, you better have a it, motion. First. It was it was easier to it was easier to write the policy. <laughs> 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 I make a motion that we adopt ordinance number 02-2016. Those in second. Okay. Second. Okay. Second. Who seconded? Who seconded? Who signified by raising? Come on, guys. It's February. We should be through this. <laughs> Did you vote? I voted for your motion. Okay. <laughs> All right. Got it. Uh, so in Alaska's to pass, and that's going to be for next. And this one is not on the agenda today, but it's a resolution. Oh, well, we have one. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> You need a motion to adjourn, Mr. Mayor? May I? Not yet. Oh, yeah, yes. There's something. Oh, it's something on the board adjourned. On the RDP? Yes. Okay. And the only thing is on pages 10 and 11, where they had the map of the courthouse square and then the, the block north of it, where they talked about uh, doing something with the water tower quadrant. I remember from our meeting that we had with them a week or two ago, in that, in, just to when the questions do come through and say, hey, we have a building there, and now you have a green space, they, they, they forgot that building was there when we drew up this plan. So they're not saying that they're going to, we have to tear that building down as part of it. They're saying that building would go? Is no, no, they're, they're oh, not. I see. They accidentally, they did, when they drew that plan, right. they overlooked that that building was sitting oh, on I see. that block. I see. Okay. I don't want that property owner to come in and say, right. why are you tearing my building down? Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Point of clarification. We're not talking about this. So I just want to bring that. We'll just sit here away. Very sorry. <laughs> point, point of clarification. But I didn't think about it when they were presenting it. Otherwise, I would have had Thank you. Thank you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Favor, vote, vote. We're adjourned. <coughs> Thanks for those that stayed tonight. Yeah, ladies, yeah. appreciate Thank it. You.